For 38 years, the Cariola Grand Prix has stood as the TM Master Cup Series' most prestigious event. As the field barrels down into turn one, turns one and two fairly standard, there you see turns three and four called Madigan and Sorolla Park. Uh, there has been some drama there, especially in the opening laps. It's very narrow over there. Turns five, six, and seven. There have been a couple of crashes over there in qualifying, and there was a big crash on the opening lap of the Constellation event. Uh, turn seven is a bit of extra runoff this year. Uh, the Kalela hairpin down there is fairly standard. Haven't had too many crashes over there or incidents of note. The Dwyer S is where we've had a lot of problems, especially in final practice where Alvar Setterberg had a bit of an off there. Turn 10 is where uh, usually a lot of problems in the Dwyer S wind up. Turns 11, 12, fairly standard. And that huge carousel, the mallet turn, sets the field up for a massive run down to turn 1. So now let's introduce you to the 46 cars. Yes, you heard that right. That will start this race. On the pole is David Krikorian, the Honda Walter Racing test driver. And on his outside, Antero Vertanen of Finland, a local hero going for the big shot here. Mikko Rantanen puts the Ren Ren car alongside three-time former race winner and four-time series champion Leonid Roderick in his usual number four. Matty Alenko heads up row three with two-time former champion Adrian Devereaux who made his debut here or attempted to several years ago. Marcus Teravainen drives for EK2 this year in a FIAM and Alvar Setterberg for the Swedish team Schoberg Motorsports in row four. Packer Carroll surprises with a great run up to ninth place in qualifying and Scott Stoidler in car number 13 on, road, on his outside. Yuho Kivela has been trying to break into the Master Cup Series for several years. He's got his best shot yet and Kevin Dwyer whose father won this race four times. Peter Short is the only representative of Vernstrom on the grid, and Scott Bates of Oklahoma has never won this race, coming close a few times. Arto Kekinen exploded on the scene here a couple of years ago, and Thomas DeBach makes, the, makes his debut after missing the first two rounds of qualifying. Last year's Indy 500 winner, Alexis Rainsford, uh, won this race back in 2011, and Chris Johans brought him on the American Short Tracks. Zelda Ashby leads the championship in the TM Master Cup Series, Nathan Nermister on her outside in car 140 makes his debut. Axel Andersson of Sweden is a rookie on the circuit. And Independence Trophy contender Ryan Matthews, a short tracker. Christopher Loxonen makes his series debut for the HV Motorsports team, which has qualified here before. Lewis Kingston on his outside. Rossini in car number three, Roderick's teammate. And Gaspar Souza of Portugal. Jacob Card in car number six. Uh, makes his first start here for Lennard International and Yako Swaminen making his debut for the Lightning Sport team. Greg Woodard in car number 41 a bit further back than he'd like alongside him Melanie Klaveno the only time the only driver to have won multiple races this year. Yamino Tenshi stole the win at Sweden her car owner is on her outside Ian Cooper in the 777 car. Frank Azure another one to the Independence Trophy contenders and Power Steering Incorporated's Kurt Pliskin in his Lycoya. Rookie Carlos Raquetta is trying to repeat the feat that Yuliana Sova did here in 07 to win as a rookie. And back in row, 11, in row 19, we have uh, car 175, Vincenzo Fochisato, Norway's Ingrid Hadeland on his outside. Going back to row 20, Idaho's Cliff Raymond in the hot lunch car makes his debut. Ben Atkins in car 50, his first run here as well in the Tutino. Chris Davenport in car number 84 in the Michelin Suns car. Struggled to get that car into the grid, and you have Jenny Kuznetsov, a very much a local favorite. Luciano Savarol barely made it onto the grid back here in row 22, and can you believe it? Last year's winner, Davina Henton, only barely qualified for this race. In final time trials, Nils Talonin in car 221, and Archer Harris, another Independence Trophy car, uh, did not set times at all. They were happy to have made the race, and so they line up on the back row, row 23 of the grid. So... Here we go, all 46 cars on the grid, and the 38th running of the Cariola Grand Prix is green. Here we go as David Krikorian gets a great start, Roderick gets a great start, Teravine and peeking out of line already. Terrible start from Virtanen as he is going backwards, as there you see now. The Ren Ren car, Rantanen is, is coming up strong as Alenko is off, but back on David Krikorian of California. Never had a big time success. We are four and five wide deep in the field. Yulina Sova jostles with Kurt Pliskin. They have some history together. Uh, Nasova runs the 16 off the course as Roderick beginning to make a charge in car number four. 
Leonard Roderick in this four car has won this race three times. Only Benny Dwyer has won it four times. Roderick, the only uh, three-time winner of the event. Leonard Roderick chasing history in that Volpia team that has had success here with Alexis Rainsford before, among other teams. Scott Bates in the 88 was quickest in final practice in the Team EFR. Journey 90 is going on the inside of Arto Kakinen as we look at the infamous gopher camera, as we the Americans like to call it, as he gets around the, uh, the local hero, Kakinen, and Scott Bates trying to make some ground up the field. We're looking back at Jacob Cards, Lennard. Oh, there's Debach, the Belgian right there. Debach squeezing him off. Thomas Debach and Jacob Card. Debach playing for keeps in uh, his tenere as Peter Short comes on the inside there of the um, of the Lennard. We're looking back at Yulia Sova in the Lynx car. Uh, as she made some contact. Oh, Pliskin is off. Davenport is off. And Nasova into Talonin. And they're both off the course. The only FinTech card, Mills Talonin and Yulia Nasova. Contact, this is on lap one. Looking off the back of the Leonardo of Luciano Savarol, the Brazilian. Oh, Pliskin made some contact with Raymond and Davenport. Uh, looked like he was just lost it on his own. I'd, and I don't know how uh, Davenport managed to lose it there. I, my guess is Davenport, as is his wont, is a bit too aggressive with the brake bias. Roderick now making a run at uh, Mikko Rantanen. And he's going to try to get him. And he, Roderick move, moves up in a second. But David Krikorian in the 04 beginning to pull away. The Hodges Walter cars were the only cars other than Scott Bates um, to make runs in practice of longer than 10 laps. And they were all lightning quick. Uh, in the final round of practice, uh, most cars only did runs of about 8 or 9 laps, which is about what we expect a fuel stint to be. The Hodges Walter cars could make it to 10. We'll have to see um, if they're able to do that. We expect seven or eight pit stops in this race. As you see the running order on the left, all 46 cars that started are still running, but Roderick is in trouble. Car number four in trouble already. He might have run over some debris, and he looks like he definitely has a gut tire. I don't see any smoke coming out of the back of that thing. And it doesn't quite look terminal. He actually looks like he's trying to nurse it back to the pits in that car of number four. Here's one of the drivers we're looking at after. Former uh, two-time Master Cup champion, former Cryala winner Alexis Rainsford won the Indy 500 last year. She's going to have to defend that pre um, pretty much immediately after this race. Uh, she's going to fly back to the U.S. and, in and Indiana to um, defend her trophy there. Her, her uh, rather, her place on the Borg Warner as Devereaux now having a run at uh, Teravinen's Fiam. Uh, there's two of those cars in the race. Uh, the FIAM, of course, uh, brought a couple of cars here. But uh, Tara Vinen, the only one of them that made it into the top half of the grid. Now here is Yuho Cavale and Arto Kakinen, two very similarly colored cars. But if you want to know if it's Kakinen or one of the three Sylvan cars, which all look the same, just look for the banner on the top of the windshield. The Sylvan cars, it's white, and Arto Kakinen and the other Gesslers, it's black. Um, the other two Gesslers there, Kevin Dwyer and Alexis Rainsford, both of them with those uh, pretty distinctive yellow cars as Ashby got around Rainsford and is now working on Scott Stoidler for, Scott Stoidler for 13th. Uh, Ashby going around uh, Stoidler, trying to get him around the outside, going into the Kalela turn, the uh, very famous uh, turn here named after the former uh, world champion Christian Kalela, who has contested this race on a number of occasions, nearly winning it twice. Uh, here is uh, now Ashby trying to clear the pass going into the Dwyer S. Very, very perceptive move by Ashby, but Ashby throws it off the track. Contact with the 13, and they're both off. Stoidler and Ashby off the course. No contact with the barriers, but I can't imagine Stoidler is very happy about this. Uh, and they're going to lose a ton of positions here. They're going all the way back. Oh, whoa, the 17 at Kingston throws it in there. The Avenger looks like he's going to make that one stick. As Adrian Devereaux now tries to work over Mikko Rantanen for what is now going to be second position. With Roderick pulling away into the distance, or rather, sorry, with David Krikorian pulling into the distance and Roderick having trouble, Adrian Devereaux wants to, whoa, Rantanen moves over on him. The Frenchman, Adrian Devereaux, shakes his fist at the young Finn. Not happy about that. This is very, very early in the race to be pulling a move like that. Mikko Rantanen not earning. Um, the respect of the two-time 
Master Cup champion. Uh, Adrian Devereaux has been starstruck. Oh, contact between Loxanen and Tenshi. As we're looking here at Melanie Clavino in car number two, winner of two races this year, that winner of that thriller in Carbondale and that other thriller in France. Uh, she's, and uh, Ashby is in the pit lane along with Chris Davenport in the 84. So we've got a couple of cars bailing for the pits already. And I wonder why Davenport was a pitting because he was a ways back in the field. That seems a bit odd as Teravainen now fending off the, oh, contact with the old Toron Limited car of Packer Carroll. And Scott Bates gets by both of them. Not Packer's fault there. I don't think there's anything he could do. Teravainen was all sorts of out of control there. As now we look back at Clavino on the two. Oh, that's a bit late. Clavino contact with, with the 74 of Undershun. She's off. She's off. Back on. Contact with the 25 of Tenshi. Coming back on, on, oh, there's a big crash in the back. Big crash in the back as Woodard is around and D'Souza in trouble. Now, looking back at Cliff Raymond in the hot lunch car, makes contact with Fochisato, and Fochisato's upside down and back over. Fochisato, big, big impact over there in that, uh, in the, uh, the uh, Euro team car. See, Fuchisato loses the back end curler, corrects it, Raymond is there, and that is a much less frightening accident than I thought it was when you look at it from that angle. Fuchisato out of that car, and he is the first, he and Raymond, the first two retirements. That's a shame for both of them. As we're looking here what happened to Woodard, Melanie Clavino and Tenchi merge back onto the track. Clavino triggered that one off, but there's no way she could have seen that, um, that there were other cars there behind Yamino Tenchi. Uh, looked like Tenchi was almost pushing her up. Well, that's a bit weird. Anyways, uh, we got, oh, Stoidler into the pits in the 13. He's got some damage on that car. Not quite sure where that's from, but Stoidler into the pits. Greg Woodard, we're being told, uh, may have some more serious damage on that car. Scott Bates now. Scott Bates, car number 88, is beginning to work over. Verten, and here he comes. Vertanen is giving him a bit of a headache because you do, he's trying to take away the preferred line, going through one and two. Turn number one as he look down through. There comes Rantanen. Scott Bates is pulled out, pulled out, and pulled out a little late in one, and he's going to get him, and I'm stumbling over my words a little bit, as you can see, but Packer Carroll in the 18 has now worked his way up to sixth place in the Ultor Unlimited car. Packer Carroll has been somewhat of a revelation uh, this, uh, this week. He solidly qualified that car, and he has been running very, very well with it. Carroll, been very much, uh, he's sort of redeemed himself this year. Past couple of years, he drove for Volpe Racing Team, had two terrible seasons with a team that uh, regularly was expected to contend for wins. Carroll didn't really fit in over there, um, and now he's gone over to Manicor Engineering, and these are the best drives of his life. Yamino Tenchi into the pits from 23rd place. Looking back at Tavina Henson in car number 11. The uh, last year's winner trying to work away from a 28th. Oh, contact with Frank Azure! And Azure has just put Tavina Henson off the course. H uh, Azure lost it under braking. Cor uh, corrected it. Henson was right there. But if you're Davina Henson uh, and you see someone clearly losing it, something's got to tell you to back it off a little bit, especially when there's not that much uh, traffic behind you. Uh, Davina Henson started all the way back in 44th position, and uh, that's some pretty heavy damage to the back of the Lynx car. Not quite showing the pace she had last year, and it's had a mental effect on Henson, as you can clearly see there. Kevin Dwyer, car number 8 in the Gessler, beginning to work his way through the field as he's working around uh, Greg Woodard, it looks like, who was several laps down. And uh, he's chasing uh, Olenko in the Sylvan car. Kevin Dwyer peeks his nose out. Peeks his nose out on exit. We've seen a lot of guys do that. He's going to get him before the S. Kevin Dwyer, great bit of foresight there. And uh, Matty Olenko uh, also got to give him a fair bit of credit too because I don't think Olenko wanted to go side by side throughout the through the S like that. Not worth it this early. David Krikorian leads very, very convincingly over teammate Adrian Devereaux. Kurt Pliskin in the 16 has already been in the pits. So Pliskin, oh, that car sounds rough. You probably heard that Lycoya go by, and the Lennard engine in that car sounded very rough. 
going by, so I wonder if Pliskin's got some problems. Krikorian peeks his nose out. Pliskin not exactly um, giving DK a whole lot of, uh, well, he did give DK space, just I don't think that was quite where he wanted it. Adrian Devereaux reeling him in, though. Scott Bates, in the meantime, has caught Rontanen as the uh, as Greg Woodard is not exactly being a kind back marker either. Scott Bates used an opportunity. Opportunity seized by Scott Bates. He goes around Rontanen, and he's going to move up a position. Moves up into fourth. Scott Bates in car 88. He is absolutely flying right now. If you can't see, you can see the determination there. With Scott Bates, we're looking back at Ingrid Hadeland, who has worked her way up to 30th, doing battle with Ben Atkins, as they uh, are shadowing Luciano Savarol. A lot of cars right now are, uh, some of the cars uh, further back have already come into the pits. We look off the back of Packer Carroll's car at Alvar Setterberg doing battle with Kevin Dwyer in the car number eight. Coming now through the Dwyer S, they're side by side. Oh, that's a big accident! Oh, that's a huge crash. Dwyer into the wall, Setterberg into the wall, and they're both out of it. So that's two more cars we can scratch from the running order. Local yellow in the S, Luch. Kevin in the 44 just crashed right in the S. Be careful. Luciano Savarol's race engineer, Gary Hall, updating him on uh, what we just saw over there. Matty Alanko now running in ninth in uh, red. He's going to move up, move him up two places to seventh in the 118 car. The, uh, he's been running some Dash Cup races um, for TH Racing, which came here to crew um, Thomas de Boxcar, but um, Alenko having a good run for, uh, of his own. Arto Kekkonen now running up in. There's Ryan Matthews shadowing him. So the Matthews car having a hell of a run right now. Kekkonen in car number nine. Won this race um, back in 09. Really hasn't had a whole lot of success here ever since then. He definitely, definitely wants to change that, and he's on his way to doing that at the rate he's going. Arto Kekkonen, car, num uh, car number nine, is uh, largely believed to be the leader of the Finnish assault uh, back on this race, which is good for this to keep this race on the calendar. There's Luciano Savarol in the five. Started all the way back in 43rd. He's up to 24th after, after nine laps. This Lennard is flying through this field. But his success appears to his, um, rather, his uh, successes in the series of late have been a bit underwhelming. Hopefully, Luciano will have a good day today. As we're looking at Thomas DeBach, who, as I mentioned in the grid piece, did not actually even run in the first two sessions of qualifying. We had four rounds of qualifying to get into this race. This car missed the first two rounds. Missed round one because the car wasn't even here. Missed round two because they were still putting it together. So, uh, Thomas DeBach and this 186 car. Made it out for round three, uh, didn't put it in the show in round three, put it in the show in round four, quite convincingly. This Tenere, there's a, there's a couple other Tenere's in the field, but uh, Thomas DeBach uh, doing a very, very good, uh, doing a very good job out there. TH Racing helping out, helping him out with that car. They've put cars on the podium several times before, most famously Nick Turbo is Ron Borba, Jacob Carr going around, Alanko as they're passing Lewis Kingston, the lap car. He has been in the pits, but he has had uh, mechanical problems, uh, I think, with that 17 car. I do believe we're getting reports that the 74 may be dropping fluid on the racetrack. I cannot confirm that, however. So, uh, Axel Andersson possibly in trouble. Jacob Card, looking back at Teravainen in car 236, the EK2 car. As he pits that car, Teravainen in, that's one of the FIAMs. Adrian Devereaux coming into the pits. We're now on lap 10. It looks like the uh, runs done by the Honda's Walter team um, justified. Yuho Kavela in the 119 stuck behind Kingston, as is Debak, as is Rossini. Debak peeks out. Kavela peeks out. Debak bails for the pit lane. Oh, Swaminet and Rossini. Bit of a sketchy moment there as uh, they follow. Yuho Cavella, who has tried to break into the Master Cup scene several times, as Adrian Devereaux has terrible pit stop for Devereaux. Rontanen, fantastic pit stop by the Renren -Ren team. Devereaux just barely beats out the EK2 car of Teravainen, so awful pit stop from the Hottest Walter crew. I don't quite know what happened there. They must have, um, 
They must have had problems getting one of the wheels off because there's no way that Devra would have been um, that far down. Um, that team runs all the races. Here's Ferdinand in car 117. Put this car in the front row. We were a little... DK into the pits on lap 11. Scott Bates make, runs it that long too. David Gregorian, who has led all 11 laps since the start of this race. Packer Carolyn, Jacob Cardin. Looks like everyone else is coming in. As you saw, Kurt Pliskin still on the racetrack. Alanko, Kekkonen, and that is Matthew. Matthews is running very well. That, that team won the consolation race with Kellen Rogers. So, um, the oh, there's Devereaux. That's how you can, that's how you can tell how much ground Devereaux lost in that pit stop. Because Alanko being scored in second. I uh, take that with a little bit of a grain of salt because the scoring hasn't quite uh, reset yet. But, um, Kakinen and uh, Alanko leapfrogging car number seven. That's and Rossini up there as well. Looks so Alessandro Rossini could be. Oh, Kakinen making a run on Alanko here. This could be sketchy. Kakinen swings it wide. Does it go? Oh, there he goes. Kakinen throws it in on the brakes. Alanko very very cautious here. Matty Alanko is. Matty Alanko very fast, but also very respectful out there. Oh wait, nope. He just threw a block on. Pretty vicious job there on the 06 of Ryan Matthews. Um, Matthews, oh, Matthews goes around him. Matt, Matt, Ryan Matthews in the 06 car. Whoa, Tara Vinen's been throwing this car all over the track so far, and uh, he's all the way back in uh, 14th, it looks like. And um, he's got a lot of cars in front of him, but uh, Tara Vinen has done a pretty good job so far this week to get that car in the field, and he's still running well. Lightning Sport car is uh, having to deal with Alexis Rainsford in the 27. Uh, Yako is going to try to hold her off. Devereaux is a bit wide, and Devereaux almost off. And Mallet, here comes the lady in red and yellow, you might want to say this year. She's going to go right on by the 319 and Adrian Devereaux, a twofer. Alexis Rainsford is uh, known for being a very aggressive driver, to say the least. Um, but one thing we've seen from Rainsford lately, especially um, on the champ car side of things, is she has gained a level of patience. And as uh, we known her, we've known her for in the Master Cup Series, she hasn't lost her ability to play mind games in the competition. Ryan Matthews, you just saw play one on Arto Kekkonen, and, he wor and it worked. Sold him a dummy, went around the other side. Thank you very much. Ryan Matthews is pulling away. The Matthews Espira is flying right now, and the Independence Trophy contender could stun us all today. Remember, this is a double points race, so some drivers who run the series regularly are going to be trying just as hard, if not harder, than some of the guys only running. Oh, Devereaux's off in the background! Adrian Devereaux off in the background. As I was just going to say, that oh, contact with Teravainen sends him off course, back on. Thomas DeBach just there, just happened to be there for Devereaux to hit. Really nothing DeBach could do about that. He got mugged. Now we're looking at Adrian Teravine and trying to pass on the outside in the Dwyer S. That was, that move just wasn't on, I'm sorry. Teravine and just came in and cut down on Devereaux, didn't, didn't have the position at all. But uh, it's hard to really say that was in time. It, it's hard to say that that wasn't anything more than a racing incident, really, but uh, that was a little too ambitious. As Kuznetsov running up in 25th, Stoidler running with him, but Stoidler's been off the course. Kuznetsov in the um, 15 car has uh, kept that car relatively clean. As uh, Kuznetsov is looking forward to his home race in Russia um, the week after this, but a lot of teams will probably be very tired and very weary, but Kuznetsov um, he's definitely keeping some energy for that race, too. As Alexis Rainsford continues, as I was going to say earlier, she doesn't care about points. Uh, so some of the series regulars uh, still have to be wary of some of these guys and, and girls only doing just this race because they could be, because their willingness to do, uh, to put uh, cars places they don't belong could be just as dangerous as anything else as we just saw with Tara Vinen and Adrian Devereaux coming together. So you have to keep, so these guys have to keep that in mind as you look at the running order on the left side. Uh, 
as looking at David Krikorian running all by himself, so there's really nothing to watch here. So why are we watching it? Here we go. Something's happening here. Yuho Kamela and and uh, Adrian Devereaux's teammate Melanie Klavano do battle for four. T oh no 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 that that Melanie. Oh, you hope just got he just got turned. Uh, there's really no other way I could put it. That move wasn't on. I'm. We're gonna watch it happen here. As Yuho Kavela, he's been. Yeah, Melanie just got right in the back. Oh, Melanie did not even really try to make that one clean. She stuck her nose in there and pretty much didn't give Yuho Kavela any choice but to go off course. That was not a fair move. I'm sorry. Time penalty well deserved, but Melanie is uh, a little bit out of line. I'm afraid. We look now at the Schaefer Group Lennard of Jacob Card. The Canadian trying to chase down Packer Carroll in the number 18 car, the Ultor Unlimited machine. The um, the Californian Packer Carroll had a disastrous run of failing to qualify for this race until finally making the field with uh, Volpe last year. Uh, but uh, this 18 car, uh, he's really putting on a show here so far. He's running up in third. He's got a much faster car behind him, even though Manicor has put cars on the front row uh, for this race. Actually, Manicor Engineering in their debut with that controversial M1A1 design as Packer Carroll is coming to lap his teammate, Lewis Kingston, as a uh, car trying to set up Carroll to see if uh, there's uh, any bad. No, Packer Carroll was uh, widely criticized for being one of the worst teammates in the field, and he's paired up with another guy also who has a reputation as a bit of a bad teammate, and Carroll caught him in a pretty advantageous spot. Jacob Carr had to check up just a little bit there, and uh, Lewis Kingston's intervention there cost um, Card a little bit there as we now uh, look back from Packer Carroll at Jacob Card. Uh, Card trying to close in, but uh, the Lennard is having a. Uh, Lennards have been having quite a few problems with this track. Uh, this track's pretty bumpy, the surface is pretty old, and this track's in Scandinavia. Carroll's really trying hard, but he's got Thomas DeBach in the way. That's what the holdup there was. Um, but the Lennards really seem, all the Lennard powered cars seem to, be, seem to be really having problems with the uh, the bumps on this track. This track is uh, it's in Scandinavia, it, has, it gets very harsh weathers. Uh, similarly to what happens to a lot of the tracks in the northern part of the United States and in Canada, is Teravine and his, or Renton, and sorry, off the track. Uh, uh, Teravine and his uh, other one. Oh, one car's off the track. Verton and is off. And Taro Verton and is off the course. we have to look at that right now. The 117. Hey, he was all sideways. That was all wrong. But he, he didn't spin the car, but look at that. He's losing a couple of places to Matthews, Rossini, and the amount of momentum he's lost, he's... Well, Melanie's not really bracing him for position, though. Here is Rossini, the Italian. He, oh, he's setting up Ryan Matthews. Alessandro Rossini's career, almost. Melanie Clavin over to the pits. Alessandro Rossini's career almost um, evaporated a couple of years ago. Uh, back in about 2009, he signed up that ill-fated Corsa attempt that went nowhere. That car was a dog. He's uh, bounced around a couple of junior series teams, but he came back in the he came back in the series with Tutino, amazed everyone. As now Jacob Card also coming through, Packer Carroll, and he's going to take over the uh, the third position. Uh, I think Card was held up by Carroll a bit longer than probably he thinks he should have. But Packer's racing him for third. He's not going to lie down. Packer Carroll's a pretty hard man to pass on a good day. Um, whether you're racing him for position or not, it seems, as Matthew is having problems getting by the 17 car, who's being Packer Carroll's greatest teammate ever because Lewis Kingston has caused both Rossini and Matthews so much ground, I can hardly begin to explain. Leonid Roderick is uh, still running on the lead lap. Car number four is not quite out of the woods yet. This race is 72 laps long, and we have not even come close to halfway yet. Uh, so this number four car, he's running up in, he's going to get 22nd right here from Ben Atkins. That's two spots out of the points. This is a double points race. Roderick's title hopes aren't over yet. And given the way this race has gone and how this race has gone in the past, he could still come back and have a very good day. This number four car. Having a run now, having another run at Ben Atkins through the uh, 
Uh, the mallet, uh, mallet corner as Atkins. Oh, Atkins! And, and, oh, Atkins being very aggressive there with the defensive driving, but also trying to get around to Souza. Roderick was, not, I don't think, terribly impressed. But Atkins, uh, the Dash Cup champion of several years ago, and Roderick going through. They're trying to chase down Luciano Savaral, who currently holds 20th. And uh, Kekkonen in the 9 car, uh, dealing with Ingrid Hadeland, who's on a different pit strategy. But Hadeland has been struggling with uh, the handle of that car, and I do would not be surprised if she was having engine trouble as Kakana now moving around the 17 car and also moved around Matty Alenko in the 118 car. It's one of the Sylvan cars as Hadeland's in a bad position there. Um, this is not a good place for Hadeland or Kingston to be in, but Hadeland's actually racing. I, th I think Hadeland in the 17 is a battle for position, actually. So they're racing, having their own battle for position as a car went off, swarming it. Rainsford trying to go three wide. Oh, that's a dangerous move. She's going to make it work. At nope. I think she backed out of it. Rainsford, um, Alexis Rainsford, I thought, was going to do the impossible and try to throw three wide over there with Alenko squeezing her down. And that, that would have been a massive shunt over there as David Krikorian continues to basically run away with this one. DK has been not... He's been largely unchallenged up at the front as Rantanen, Miko Rantanen, who's having a fantastic showing out there. Uh, and this is uh, only his second ever start. Uh, he's doing battle with Alessandro Rossini in car number three, who is really clawing his way through this field, actually. Um, for those of you curious, the, the um, uh, last year aside, uh, the past three years... Um, Twice this race has been won uh, from a driver that started a little bit further back in the field. So it's not entirely impossible to claw your way through this field and win this race. As you see, Rantanen really defending. He saw him moving over a little bit proactively to keep Rossini at bay, but Rossini peeks it out at the last minute. And he Rantanen gives him plenty of room. Plenty of room there as Rantanen gives... Rossini racing him to go by, but Rantanen was trying to set him up maybe to get more momentum going into three, but that's not the case here. Nathan Nermister, car 140, having a very good day here. This team is based in Finland, the Nurse Speed team. But um, Nathan Nermister of England having a great showing for himself. He's running up in 16th as the Katsip drivers do battle. Carlos Raquetta of Colombia and uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov of Russia and uh, those cars look the same. Yeah, we can tell them apart now. <laughs> so, there we go. You can tell them apart because Raquette has got the rookie stripes in yellow on the back of his car. As Rantanen pits the 770 car. Rantanen also a regular in the uh, touring car ranks of Europe. Most a prominent series, the Dash Cup series, obviously. Uh, as uh, Rantanen uh, puts that car in the pit lane, he's having a good. He's having a pretty good day today. Burton and, and uh, Rainsford. It's got to be Rainsford because Dwyer's been out of this race for a long time. What's wrong with me? Um, have, are into the pits as well. As DK running into lap traffic. Oh, Davina Henton going a lap down. Oh, this day is going to be heartbreaking for Davina Henton because she has had such a rough couple of weeks. She has refused to talk to the press for a long time. And uh, D Davina Henton's a very moody individual to begin with. Um... Uh, she has she has not been feeling confident all week, and um, what a difference from I mean, it one year makes for Davina Henson. But David Gregorian, on the other hand, has just got to be on top of the moon right now. As Scott Bates pits the, the 88 car, Bates still running in second and is slowly reeling DK in actually. As uh, Rossini and Packer Carroll hit the pits as well, and there is where they are scored presently. As Ryan Matthews in the 06 car is uh, going is the last car to hit the pit lane, um, and that 06 car, the Matthews Espira. Ryan Matthews continuing to march his way through the field as you see the running order on the left side. Looking here at Carlos Raquetta and Leonid Roderick as they do battle for 16th place. Roderick peeks his nose in through the Dwyer S. Is Raquetta going to give him room? Raquetta's brash and young. Roderick, oh. Uh, nope, Raketta tried too hard. Oh, Raketta kept that thing under control. Raketta, how did you know? Carlos Raketta did something I haven't seen anyone do. When they're losing the car, they're to keep it pinned against the wall. That's uh, 
That's something I would not have expected a young driver like him to try. Uh, so Carlos Roqueta clearly looking out for the well-being of his uh, fellow drivers. And that's good to see a young driver with that much respect as Alexis Rainsford and Zelda Ashby doing battle for 23rd. But Rainsford's just pitted. So I think there might be a... Oh! Oh! Rainsford just got turned! That was not even close. That was way out of line for Zelda Ashby. That's someone who really should know better than that. Because, uh... Rainsford had just come out of the pits, and uh, Ashby had plenty of room to go through. I can't imagine that Rainsford's going to be terribly impressed. And I don't think uh, this reflects well on Ashby either, because that showed that Ashby is cracking under the pressure of double points a little bit. As Archer Harris... Is oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Carlos Ricada pile drove into the back of the 79 car. That was uncalled for by Carlos, who looked like he was just, who just came into the pits way too fast. Ryan Matthews in the 06 has stayed out on track, but he wasn't scored as leading a lap because DK's, uh, because of where David Gregorian's pit stall is. So Matthews uh, led a lap, kind of, but didn't cross the start finish line as the leader. So it doesn't quite count until you uh, lead the lap the start, lead the lap the start finish line. No surprise there with that time penalty handed out to the 55 car. That was deserved. That's going to plummet Ashby, who was running up in ninth. So, um, just don't make stupid moves like that. It's quite simple. We saw Melanie Clavino do that earlier, and Ashby did the same thing. No need for it. Uh, she goes by Rantanen, who I think just heard the word that he's not racing the 55 and just let her go. Rainsford, on the other hand, back in 20. Oh, contact with... Um, a driver she describes as one of her best friends, uh, Davida Henton. Uh, on track, uh, Rainsford's still in it, but that car doesn't quite look the same as it was before. Roderick, in the meantime, is uh, up in 18th, doing battle with Christopher Loxanen, the rally driver. Uh, Loxanen is uh, fairly well known for his rally abilities, and he's going by Roderick on the outside, as looks like he's gotten his tires up to temperature already, and Roderick isn't really going to do battle with the Finn. And lets him go by. Looking back at Nermister, Ian Cooper, and uh, the uh, Terravinen car. Ian Cooper, the 777 car, going trying to figure out all sorts of different ways to get around uh, Terravinen, who's really dropped through this field a little bit. But Nermister's up in 11th. So I guess I should uh, retract that comment about Terravinen going backwards. I think it's the 777 coming forwards. Because that the Allison Becker car is flying right now, and so is Nathan Nermister making his series debut. It's that team's debut in this series, and th and um, it doesn't really matter where they finish because right now Nathan Nermister is making a hero of himself. Thomas the Box a lap down in the 186 car, but the Allison Becker rod, Ian Cooper, that silver and pink car, challenging Nermister off and back on. Cooper challenges. Teravinen goes by. No, not quite. It's run down a little bit. I wouldn't do that to the 777 car too many times. Even though that car is known to be the widest on the circuit, it's also, um, we've seen that car pull some stunts that probably nobody else should. Uh, let's leave it at that, perhaps. Um, especially when it comes to using the chrome horn. Uh, here is Mario Lanco in the 118 car, who's still kept his car in one piece. A lot of the lap cars have peeled off. Uh, whatever strategy they're on isn't working all that well. Um, as Alanko continues to uh, try to regain lost ground, Roderick making up. Oh, contact with Nermister. Nermister off and back on as Chris Johans take him to the take him to a uh, Fast and the Furious screening. After that, he could teach those guys a thing or two with that bit of work. Um, sliding that purple 12 all over the place is Chris Johans. Ian Cooper finally looks like he's going to be able to make it stick around Teravainen. Oh, there we go. Throws the block. And that's a big no, no, no. You stay back there, Marcus. As um, heading down the main straightaway, Roderick now on Swominen. As uh, looks like Melanie Clavin was in the pits. Here comes Teravainen back on him. Roderick is now challenging with the, um, the 319 car, the Lightning Sport entry. But uh, Ian Cooper and the Allison Becker sponsored EFR Journey A90. The only car on track that I think is quicker than him might be his teammate. 
Scott Bates, who is still running up in second and running David Krikorian down as Roderick dives it in and under Elenko in the 118 car. This has been a fantastic race everywhere but the lead of the race seemingly, but that battle is um, the way that race is setting itself up to be. That will um, develop probably in about 30 laps as Roderick goes off and Elenko takes the spot back. Here's Alessandro Rossini and Packer Carroll. Both of these guys are actually going faster than, oh, my Ryan Matthews also, I should count on that list. We could we should not rule any one of these guys out to win this race because they're all reeling David Krikorian in, but especially Rossini, who is absolutely flying right now. The Italian is hunting down Jacob Card and Scott Bates. Here is Card in the six. Bates a bit wide. He's over at the lap car of Yamino Tenshi. Here comes the sixth, the clockwork midnight of Tenshi going a lap down. Oh, and here comes Card, who has cleared Scott Bates. The Canadian, Jacob Card, has not run all that well, as well as we would have expected all season long. He won one of the races in Australia last year. He won in Queensland. Scott Bates going to try him in the S again. Oh, they touch. They touch. Bates off and back on, but they touch. They touch again, and, um, well, no, they didn't touch again there, but um, they touch again. <laughs> they touched again coming in through 10. That could have been bad. Uh, Scott Bates and uh, the 6 car. Oh, Bates held up by the 17 of Kingston. Card squeezing him in. The 17's got a pit. Kingston bails for the pits. How awkward would that have been for the lap car of Kingston as Jacob Carr challenges Scott Bates. They come up, find Gasper to Souza. Bates trying to use a bit of draft off the 60, but that's not going to work. Card was boxing him in, and Jacob Card asserts oh, that position. That was fantastic stuff between those two guys. Jacob Card has been fairly lackluster up until now, and now he's looking like he's on top of the world. He had a pretty big uh, crash in qualifying, but he still put that six car in the show. Jacob Card is, uh, but he's got to be careful, though. These guys might be showing up. Ryan Matthews, the Independence Trophy leader, and Alessandro Rossini, who earlier in this year led the championship. Both of these men are very highly touted by their peers, but they've yet to have some of the big league success. Rossini, though, clears Matthews, and Rossini driving for Volpe could be well on his way to um, some very big success in the near future, especially if he keeps this uh, the pace up that he's shown so far this year. Leonid Roderick has said Rossini could very well be the toughest teammate he has ever had because of Rossini's uh, amazing ability to adjust on a car mid-race as David Krikorian pits the 04 car from the lead. As you also saw, Mikko Rantanen pit the 770 car one lap early. So Krikorian making very good mileage. Here's the 6 car, Jacob Card pitting the Lennard. And uh, Scott Bates is in right with Card as well. The uh, looks like the last car that's going to uh, the last car among the lead group that uh, might uh, be headed to the pits as Rossini. You see him coming into the pits right now in the car number three. It's going to be Ryan Matthews in car number zero six. With uh, about half of this race uh, completed, David Krikorian leads. Jacob Card is second. Scott Bates, Ryan Matthews, and Rossini the top five. Packer Carroll in car eighteen. And Arto Kekkonen should not be counted out either. Roderick has cracked the top ten with an amazing drive so far from the former three-time race winner. Ian Cooper and Nathan Nermister are, are could be on their way to uh, good results as well. And beyond that, it looks like it's gonna it could be a little shaky if any of those drivers could win this race. But uh, good results for them. Top tens uh, are not out of the question. Here's where things get a little questionable. Luciano Salver on the five, despite having some of the fastest uh, the, one of the fastest cars out there. Started way, way too far back to really capitalize. Archer Harris has made it a, a good run of it as well. And also you start getting into, uh, these are all the cars that are still left running uh, in this race. It's amazing. We have so many of them still left in the race. Of all the 46 starters, you see all, uh, all six of those drivers out. Anderson, the only one that went out due to mechanical difficulties. Everyone else out from crashes. We still have a long ways to go to declare the winner of this year's running of the Cariola Grand Prix.